In the previous two videos, we have learned how to train an image classification model using SageMaker's inbuilt algorithm as well as PyTorch framework. Please watch those two videos first because uh, the process for training object detection model will also be very similar, right? So few things change like uh, the data preparation, the ground truth format, etc. But as far as the training steps are concerned, they will be very, very similar. Okay. All right. Now, again, I'm assuming you know what is object detection because this is a course on SageMaker. I will try to create uh, a basics uh, computer vision course, okay, where I will explain uh, what these different tasks are. Now, in object detection, given an image, we try to identify the objects of interest, right? So, image classification is at the image level, whereas this object detection, it's much localized. So, in addition to knowing what objects the image has, we will also know where in the image the objects are. For example, let's take this image and we are interested in two objects, cat and dog. Okay. So, this image has four objects, two cats and two dogs. And we also have these boxes to indicate where in the image the objects are. Now, there are various ways uh, to have these box coordinates. Some models, they'll have this top left, a uh, top corner and bottom right corner coordinates, top left and bottom right coordinates. Some models take the center of the box and then these half widths, uh, etc. right? So when we work with different models, we will cover uh, all of those details. But today we will be training uh, an inbuilt uh, model called SSD, single shot detection. Okay, so this model, it takes the top left coordinates, X and Y, these two numbers, and then bottom right coordinates, uh, X and Y, two numbers. Okay. Now, I have already prepared the data. Again, the data preparation, ground truth preparation, etc. We will see in the follow up videos. But first, we are trying to become comfortable with the models training. We have seen uh, this for tabular data using XGBoost model. Then uh, we have seen image classification models using inbuilt and uh, different frameworks. And today we are looking at object detection using inbuilt. In the next video, we will do the same object detection, but again using uh, either TensorFlow or PyTorch framework. So first we are becoming comfortable with this model training for tabular data, text data, images, etc., etc. Then you will start to see the patterns, right? So once we become comfortable, then we get into the data preparation part and after that uh, the model uh, uh, validation uh, part okay all right so i have already prepared the data now so object detection ssd model now train images it has all these uh, images and then we have train annotations now the ssd model it exp expects one JSON file for each image, okay? So corresponding to each image in the training folder, we will have one JSON file for each uh, image. Similarly, we will have validation images and then the validation annotations, okay? So those are the four folders. Now let's look at what is in uh, one of these JSON files. Oh, where is my VS code? Yep. All right. So this is one of the JSON files. So this format is particular for SSD model only. Now, if we are training the same SSD model using TensorFlow, the format might be different 
maybe for pytorch uh, it will be different it essentially contains the same information but how we measure the box coordinates will be different and it might not have uh, the label names it might contain only the class ids or label ids okay but let's not worry let's look at what it takes for ssd model inbuilt okay so this contain four attributes so the first one is file which is basically the image name now this is the corresponding ground truth file in json format for this image right and then we have image size uh, it takes three values image width height and the depth now for color uh, photos or images it will be three if it's gray images uh, this will be typically one but we mostly work with color images so this value by default is three and then we have annotations okay now this is a list and the list contain as many elements as the number of objects the image has okay so for example this particular image it contained two objects okay so this is object number one and this is object number two now uh, it it just happened that both objects are same for this image now for the dark sign cat images we saw it has four objects and two objects for each class right so an image contain any number of objects belonging to any number of classes okay it may contain only one object or it may contain multiple objects so in this case uh, each element within this annotations uh, is an object uh, with five elements right so the first one is this class id again this is an integer uh, index starting with zero and then will have these four values as the box coordinates so ssd model is taking the top left and bottom right coordinates so the top and left okay and then sorry it's not taking the bottom right coordinates from the top left coordinates once we know the coordinates we can identify the box using the width and height uh, of the box also right so for example uh, let me go back to the uh, image so okay sorry i was wrong so the ssd model it takes this top left coordinates so this point once we know this point in order to know the box there are various ways right i mean we can know this coordinate the bottom right coordinate then we can draw a rectangle or we know this coordinate and then we know the width and height of the image so the width in this x direction and the height in this y direction right so using such information also we can construct the box so that's what the ssd model is doing top left coordinate and then the width of the object and height of the object okay and then for the second object we have the same five attributes the id as well as uh, the coordinates and finally it has these categories which is simply mapping between the class ids to the class name okay all right so in this case both objects belong to the same class id uh, which uh, is the daisy okay i'll just show you the image as well uh, this is that image so we we have two objects right so one i'm sorry so one bonding box here another bonding box uh, here uh, we actually have a third object i mean third uh, da same daisy flower it's not fully visible uh, it's up to you i mean sometimes uh, we might draw a box as well even though it is not fully visible um, yeah all right so that's how we create the ground truth okay so we have the images and we have the ground truth json files one for each image all right let's go to the code 
Now, okay. So here we define the bucket name and path. And similar to classification inbuilt algorithm, the inbuilt object detection algorithm or model also expects the number of classes as well as the number of images uh, for the training, right? Uh, other frameworks, we don't need to explicitly provide these variables because from the JSON files and from the uh, images, uh, these can be computed uh, uh, inbuilt, right? All right, then we have the number of epochs and batch size. Uh, and we have the training instance type and a job name, right? So these are the variables. Now you see uh, the similarities, right? Whether it is classification or object detection. Uh, I have tried to simplify the code. Uh, we are trying to train the model with as few commands as possible. I have standardized so that you will see the four sim the similarities between these four models. Two classification models, two object detection models, inbuilt, non-inbuilt, right? So that way, uh, you start to see the patterns and it becomes easier to do the training. All right. Now we are retrieving the image. Uh, this time it is object detection. Okay. And very standard, uh, the training uh, and also latest. Now, even if you don't give this variable, I think it will take the training as default. Uh, again, as it is an inbuilt model, uh, the same Docker is used for uh, uh, training as well as inference whereas for non-inbuilt models these two are separate these two are different okay all right let's define the output path and then uh, let's get the SageMaker estimator object detection estimator so we simply supply uh, the docker uh, image and then uh, everything standard as before nothing different here compared to the classification one. So the role, the instance count, the type, the size, memory size. This is the maximum run. Now, uh, if you don't set this value, uh, for some reason, let's say the algorithm is not converging or maybe there is some, some other issue, the model might keep running and will get a huge bill. So this, I think in seconds, uh, so once this time limit is reached, the training automatically stops. Uh, I'm guessing I'll make sure uh, that is correct. Okay, the input mode again, file format. Uh, we discussed before, uh, there are multiple ways. One of them is record IO, which is in a uh, very efficient for uh, loading large amounts of data. But again, uh, we will be doing transfer learning uh, and our own use cases won't have millions of images. So probably the file format works as efficiently, okay? And then the output path. So only the two or three uh, variables here, the train image, uh, this will change from model to model. Then we have the output path change, changes, and then two attributes related to instance. The rest all are uh, fixed for uh, any estimator, right? Now, then we set the hyperparameters. Uh, as we have discussed before, we need to explicitly define the number of classes as well as the number of training images, right? And then the number of epochs and batch size. Now this uh, SSD model, it can use two frameworks or algorithms. So the SSD, it works like, uh, it's a two-step process. In the first step, it get the features from one of the existing models. The one is ResNet. Uh, what's the other one? Is it? I'll find out the other one. Okay. Uh, so it will take one of the two values and then the pre-trained model. So this again, one indicates uh, the transfer learning. Okay. Uh, all right. So these all, we can leave them as it is. Uh, uh, I mean, the SageMaker uh, blogs and notebooks, 
they probably find the most uh, fine-tuned parameters so we can use them uh, as it is okay and then uh, here we are defining the paths for the input uh, or the training data annotations validation data and annotations this we have seen uh, this is exactly similar as before okay uh, all right then here we are defining the data channels which will contain these four attributes train images train annotations validation images and annotations again create uh, a unique name for the job and that's it uh, train submit the job okay supplying the data channels now these two are not uh, uh, required parameters but we would like to give a job name so that maybe later we can identify uh, we can search in the console uh, for example okay what are the models i trained in maybe the first week of june something like that right all right okay again the logs follow same format uh, starting with the job id uh, i prepare the instance download the training data download uh, maybe the model uh, parameters if it's uh, not available there uh, using other frameworks um, again lots of information uh, the most important one we'll see uh, the validation score uh, with the epoch number so it will be quality metric post metric folks let me find one it has lots okay so this is for each epoch start time and time so the quality metric yeah yeah so quality metric train smooth hmm. batch for cross entropy it used to have validation mep oh yeah here it is okay so at epoch number nine this validation mep uh, it's just 0 0.02 which is very very poor now this the data set uh, okay let me show you this mm. so as you can see these images are extremely poor resolution those those are just intense of kb uh, this data set is not really suitable for uh, object detection but I just want to train a model quickly with low cost and the main purpose is to show you how to train the model rather than to train a good quality model okay or most accurate model right so this is not a great model uh, and also we probably need to train for more epochs uh, if the objects look somewhat similar to each other uh, in this case the daisy and sunflower uh, when seen from far uh, they look somewhat similar and also have we we have very very few training examples and the flowers have multiple colors so the training data is probably not sufficient okay all right so the job completed uh, and again you see the time all right so that's how we train an object detection model now the rest of it uh, quickly deploying the model and making one inference uh this is exactly same as before so i won't go into the details uh, but the prediction it looks like this so it's a list of lists let's look at just one element from it so this is the first element or the first detection okay so the first element even though it is a float this is actually the class id so for our case this can either be zero or one or two okay because we have three different object types and then this one the value will be between zero to one and that's the confidence score so higher the confidence close to one the model is very confident that the object is what it is uh, the or the prediction so here the confidence score is 0 0.38 uh, that's uh, really poor um, and this list is sorted uh, using this second element for example if we look at uh, the second detection uh, 
uh, the score as you can see here this is 0 0.381 whereas this one 0 0.384 so as we go down the list uh, the confidence score of the detection decreases now generally for object detection there will be lots and lots of detections with very very low confidence score so what we do is we choose a threshold it could be let's say 0 0.3 0 0.5 something like that and then we ignore uh, all the detections below the threshold so 90 percent of the detections will have very very low confidence score okay so all right and then there will be four values these are the box coordinates now earlier we have seen the in the ground truth as integers right but this time we have the fractions because these are scaled coordinates okay so these values are between 0 to 1 so these are scaled using the image dimensions right for example it will, it will be something like this for example let's say this coordinate is 50 and the image size is let's say 100 so it will be displayed as 50 by 100 uh, 0.5 rather than 50 okay so that's why we see the fractions here now in the follow-up videos we will access this information and uh, we will uh, compute uh, the model performance matrices and we will use these numbers to draw the detected boxes on the images we will also draw text on the image with the label id or name and the probability etc so that on the image we can see uh, where the detections are what the detections are and their confidence score okay we will do that in the follow-up videos but i will quickly summarize uh, so first we prepare the data uh, into train and validation we have the images and annotations we have one annotation file for each image and then uh, the annotation file it takes this format so basically the file name the image size and then annotations contain uh, the objects information what object it is and where in the image the object is in the form of this top left width and height right different model takes different formats and then uh, because uh, it is an inbuilt uh, algorithm uh, the process is uh, so much easier so we simply supply okay i want to do an object detection using the latest uh, version of the model so we get the uh, image uri and then we define the output path we get the estimator uh, using uh, the train image uri we also define how many instances we want to use for training and what instance and we supply the output path and then we set some hyperparameters so these are mandatory hyperparameters uh, the number of class uh, well these are not really hyperparameters okay the hyperparameter is something which can affect uh, the performance of the model this we just need to supply the number of classes and the number of uh, samples are the training images these two are not hyperparameters so the epochs and mini batch size they are hyperparameters okay and uh, this base network uh, to extract the features it takes uh, two values one of the two values one is this resnet 50 the other one i will check and uh, 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 maybe explain uh, well i'll mention that maybe in the comment section but i think it's mobile net so the pre-trained model this is for transfer learning and we can uh, leave the list, uh, rest of the variables as it is and then we define these uh, data channels uh, by providing the four paths we create a unique name for the job and simply submit the job okay the inference is exactly the same whether it is classification or object detection etc all right so in the next video we will see how to train an object detection model uh, using one of the frameworks either tensorflow or uh, pytorch uh, etc okay that's it for today uh, thank you very much